Did it work? Hey, good morning. The sound even works this morning. Hi, 21, good morning, how are you? Sorry, star screen was a little longer than usual. I was waiting for my coffee. Uh, I'm pretty good. I forgot to set up the... <laughs> Just three more to go. Nice. I forgot to set up the automatic coffee pot last night, so pour over it is. Sleep was good. So good that I uh, forgot to set my alarm and I woke up at 6 instead of 5.30. How was sleep for you? This is gonna be way too hot to drink. Oh. Yeah, whole half hour extra. A whole half hour extra. No, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Whoa. We're gonna be doing something uh, fun today. Ugh. I have needed an organizer for my knitting needles for some time. Yours was good. Slept at 1.30 a.m. and woke up around 10. Nice. And it's 5 p.m. and you're still sleepy. <laughs> still sleepy at 5 p.m. Nice. That's not too bad, though. I'm, I'm one of those people who is literally could fall asleep at any moment, given the chance. What is my activity feed doing here? It does not want to cooperate. There we go. We go half, half and half around here. Chat and activity. Don't fight me on it. All right, I'm gonna need some thread. And If mobile wasn't there, I would sleep for so long and so early. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Uh, I need to iron this fabric out. So let me pull out my iron and my uh, little tabletop ironing board. You get to see the mini, mini iron today. <laughs> The mini iron. Voila. This is going to be absolutely riveting stuff. 
The stuff everyone dreams of watching. Me iron things. So the idea is to make a organizer out of these two fabrics. I might add in some more just for flavor. But I needed to make sure I had a heavier fabric. Um, well, one of the things I'm going to do to celebrate is let chat pick my hair color. So I might have a new hair color in the next couple days. But I am open for ideas as far as other things we can do to celebrate. So I needed the heavier duty fabric to be... You have a bizarre knack for thinking your stream is just before I get a notification that you're like, oh, are you psychic for me? So I wanted it to be just slightly bigger than the length of this needle because this is the longest that I have. And this is a good like four inches wide, wider, which means the pokey ends are not going to be sticking out. My game plan, which I kind of made yesterday, looks a little bit like this. So, one side being for the long, big needles, and then it goes medium, small from there. A couple pockets for small organizing, such as like uh, stitch markers and uh, stitch holders and stuff like that in my tapestry needles. And then a spot for crochet hooks and double pointed needle sets. So this is the game plan. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So this is a game plan for today, but first I have to iron out my fabric because it is a complete wreck. And I'm waiting for the iron to heat up. But yesterday, I got to go to a yarn shop in the city. I uh, hitched the horses on up to the carriage and I rode out to the big city. And I went to the yarn shop. <laughs> And I bought some wool, wool yarn. I have this, which is a uh, worsted, 100% wool in kind of a lighter brown color. I grabbed this, which is also worsted, 100% wool yarn, but it's darker brown. And I grabbed these two uh, mini skeins of uh, green and yellow. These are uh, merino wool, the, well, 75% merino wool. And the rest is nylon because they're meant for socks. So these are going to become a little Bathilda. So you, you've seen Bathilda around if you've been here. Uh, she's the black sheep in in our emotes, she is in the uh, little about section down there. She's a little black one. She's in some alerts that we have. So I'm going to make a plush of her fairly soon. And I had to go find the wool for it. Because I figured she should be made out of wool. Because she's a sheep. Yes, yes, Bethilda. So worsted is medium weight yarn. They, their yarn craft is weird and confusing in the way that they have multiple terms for the same thing. 
worsted weight is medium weight yarn. And uh, this is fingering weight or super fine yarn. So that's the part that confuses me most of the time is trying to, in my head, make sure that I know that these are the same thing. Because although sometimes yarn looks like the same size, they're not. <laughs> Let's see, good example. These, the strands look similarly sized. Are they the same size? No. This is super fine and this is light. So this is size three, size one. Light, <laughs> it's super fine. So even though they look the same, there is uh, more, there are more strands inside of this yarn than there are in this yarn. It's confusing. It's very confusing. But I'm thinking that I'm going to make her a little dress in this yellow and a little cardigan in the green. Yeah, when you used to finger knit, you used to do. Yeah, for most finger knits. You've been stabbed by the doctors. Yes. Yes, sketch. Good job getting stabbed. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so yeah, knit, uh, betrayed by the ripper. Uh, so that's the confusing things about yarn is that uh, there are several names for kind of the same thing, but also kind of not the same thing. Yes, these are the handiest thing for people who live in a small place. And it was inexpensive as well. I think it was only like... Fifteen? Fifteen dollars? And it has come in handy. Because I didn't want to have a full-sized iron for just sewing. Because I don't typically iron a bunch of my clothes. Although now that I wear uh, more vintage. More vintage items that require like pleating and such and are made out of fabrics that actually wrinkle. I do use an iron for my clothes now. It's nice and little and compact and I can put it away and take it out very easily. It's very nice. Oh, well, I'm sitting here. If I can find it. I'm not allowed to show part of this. There you go, total. <laughs> there, there's, there are my, uh, uh, my patches from the 70s that I'm not allowed to show part of. I've been looking at them, yes. I haven't decided. I I am on the fence. I found them in a box at my grandma's house. Yeah, I'll 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 take a picture and put them in the Discord for you. Cuz I think you'll like them. There's a few other ones. 
somewhere as well. This one is probably my personal favorite. I don't know why. It's just it's just cute in the way that it seems like it's being sarcastic about wanting you to have a nice day. Oh yeah, shipping. And then there's some. I have a jeans patch, a Levi's jean, jeans patch. I don't know if I have more in here. Mouthwash. And then this one is stuck to a birthday card on accident, but it's a little tiny di dinosaur. Yeah. I want to try one out too. Good morning, Elliot. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I shouldn't leave my iron right next to my phone for too long. So, I have all the, well, not all of you, but I have a lot of you uh, who are frequenters. Tired. Oh, yeah, a little dino. So I want to put that somewhere too. Uh, what are your ideas for hair colors? Because we only have uh, we only have three left. We only have three three followers left. Oh yes. You should have a notion uh, pen pal club. Notion pen pals. I'll send you a letter with a button in it. Blue, you want people to ask your pronouns. <laughs> I, I, I like blue hair because I want people to ask if I know the origin of Pac-Man. Some of these wrinkles are going to need some water in order to iron out. Ugh. Somebody to awkwardly slide down the wall at me at a party. You know, it's all a girl wants in life. Ah, uh, she her. Cool, cool. Yes. After much deliberation. Ah. I've decided that I hate ironing. Although I've pretty much always known this. Just now. I, in particular. Oh, yes. Yes, it's always good to ask. Always good to ask. I know. <laughs> I'll be slow. You, you know me, I can't slow down for one second. It's so sad to go slow though. I know I should go slow, but it's not fun. I'm just like Sonic. I want to go fast. <laughs> I 
I know. I know, I know. Just behave myself and slow my butt down. When you get your airbrush and start painting fabric, ironing will become a thing that you need to do in order to set the paints. Yes. I have to iron all the time. Because when you, when you sew patterns and stuff, you have to iron. I just don't like it. But it'll work out better if it's flat. I use a surprising amount of yellow for the part of me that doesn't really like yellow that much. <sighs> oh, nice. Nice. I like this for you. Okay. Kind of get this folded in half. Ooh, yellow, purple, white on the back. I like it. Trying to get this to light evenly. Okay. We've got it. Now I'm going to pin it so that it behaves itself because it wants to fold in a weird way. And I don't want it to. I kind of want my stripes to be straight. The hard part will be consistently mixing the purple correctly. Yeah, yeah. Mixing paint is hard. Mixing paint is hard. Okay, there we are. And then we will do this piece. Which will be a little easier to iron because it's light. Yeah, I would mess that up so hard. Mixing paint the same every time. I can never get paint the same color after I've run out after mixing it. Never happen. Pink with a little blue is about right. Nice. I've got to slow down. The excited part of me that wants to get going and do things right this second is taking over slowly. Or more likely quickly. It's taking over quickly. So quickly. I'm excited to start on, start knitting the uh, sheep. I'm excited to knit the sheep. I'm excited for the sheep. I love sheep. I love sheep, first of all. 
And second of all, I love uh, little animals in clothes, so this is perfect for me. I do enjoy an animal in some clothing. My parents have been putting the kid goats in coats for the past few days, for the past couple weeks, because it's so cold outside. And my mom sends me pictures. It's nice. I appreciate when the goats have coats. Yeah, I forgot to make coffee last night in preparation for waking up early this morning. <laughs> so, I had to do pour over this morning. I cannot tell what that is meant to be from this distance, Saf. It looks like something I'm not going to say out loud. But I don't blame you, Elliot. I would also go back to bed at some point today if I had the ability to go back to bed at some point today. I forgot to turn this fan off. Curse. Now I'm gonna have to try to stand up. It's a spray can. Okay. My screen is far away. I'm reading chat off of a screen that's a good distance away, so. It looks like something else, but that's because it's it's far away from me. I don't have the best of eyesight. I have I think we've determined. <laughs> My eyesight is terrible. Wow, that was quick. That was quick. I had to go, when I went to the yarn shop yesterday, I had to park, we had to park in a parking garage that's how how big of a city we were in we had to park in a parking garage but I found what I was looking for which was the whole point of going out and plus they were having a sale although everything was still pretty uh, pretty pricey for the most part. I didn't end up getting any of the yarns that were on sale because they were too expensive. I'm not that fancy. Because I was looking for, uh, you know, super fine yarn, fingering weight, you know, for like the, the plushies clothes. And I was looking at their sale pile of the same weight and everything was like still over $25. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to go with that. Like, yeah, that's a little, that's a little rich for my taste. I'm gonna get the little ones that are not on sale. Because they have enough yarn for what I'm doing. And they're actually in colors that I want. 
the other ones weren't particularly colors that I was super into, so I don't like to buy stuff that I'm not going to use or not going to like. So it's one thing if I get yarn that I don't like as long as it's something that I'm not buying <laughs> with money. Like, I don't particularly like a lot of the yarns that I got from my grandmother, but I got them from my grandmother and they were free. Would I ever wear them in a garment? No. They're scratchy as all get out. But I will use the ones that I got from my grandmother in other things. Well, with an exception of what the cardigan is made out of. I'll wear that one. It's soft, but. The other yarn I have gotten from my grandmother is uh, very, very scratchy and very, very rough. So far, hair suggestions. We have bright red, blue, teal. And then I'm not sure how serious the other ones that I've received over time have been. So. Those are our options so far, but we are only three away, so it could happen any day now. And my plan would be to go try to find said hair dye after stream and then the next day it'll be done. The deal will be done. But that's just my idea. Finding said hair dye will, might be a process. Good morning, Cookie. How are you? How are you doing this fine morning? Or afternoon for you, I believe. But welcome back. Are you in class today? Or are you being good and uh, not being online when you're in class? Okay. Put that over there. I'm going to fold this one in half because I am going to make the straps out of this one. No class today. Yay. Yay. The new Pokemon. How is that? How is the new Pokemon? All I heard about it first off is that there was a lot of bugs. Uh, knitting needle. Well, and crochet hook, because I have some of those. And eventually I plan on learning how to crochet. So basically all of my loose needles and hooks in my basket down here, I need somewhere to uh, keep them together. So, I thought that perhaps I could make something to put them in that is kind of like this. So I want one big section for the longer needles and then they progressively get smaller. Crochet, 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 crochet hooks, <laughs> crochet hooks, uh, a, an area for the double pointed needle sets, some pockets for a small organization. So that's what I'm thinking. That is what I'm thinking. I did a plan in my brain and on paper. And I wish I knew where my ruler was. But I have no idea where my ruler is. So. I'm not the best at freehand cutting either. So. 
So, I can either try to find my ruler. It's not perfect, but it has its, its moments. Nice. Which, in theory, should be in my sewing stuff. But I don't see it. Or I can use a paper to wing it. Which is probably, in all actuality, what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> I'm not patient enough to find my ruler. I am not patient. Paper makes a great ruler. Find ruler. I don't wanna. But I don't wanna. In theory, it's on the shelf. In theory. Got my button tin. Nope. I can use this, <laughs> which is see-through, so you probably can't see it, but it's square ruler. Okay. So I am going to try to mark out how wide we want the little straps to be. So I'm thinking we might need a couple straps to hold in the, probably three or two to hold in the uh, big needles, but probably two for each of the sizes, top and bottom to make sure they're secure. And I'm going to probably put elastic in these, although I could just make them tight enough, but I might just do elastic. I might just... I might just do it. We'll see. We might see. I'm going to mark out where I need to cut. It's acceptable. I've passed. Oh, yes. Elastic, because if you do it tight, then you limit yourself on adding more needles. Nice. Ooh. Do you drink cheap fuel? Yeah. I've never tried it. I try to avoid energy drinks because my heart doesn't doesn't quite enjoy them. I have enough trouble with my heart pounding on a daily basis. Used to drink a similar product. Gotcha. Eighty-six. So 
So I'm going to cut out a few of these to start. Sugar free. Nootro Nootropic. Huh. Never heard of it. At least it's sugar free. Nootropic. <laughs> okay. It's not nut tropic? Are you sure? Sugar free, yeah, it is. It is kind of pretty BS. It has a sweetener of some sort, I'm sure. Cut these little little strappies out. Yeah. I do know some people who have that problem. Namely, my grandmother. Although these days, she doesn't really care a whole lot about what she eats. She eats what she wants and suffers the consequences later. Unfortunately, which I've told her is bad and is not a good idea and will cause her health problems. But she doesn't really super care about it. She's like, I'm 77. I'm going to eat what I want. Like, okay, whatever. It's not good for you. I'm just saying. And I'll get to what size I want to cut out the pockets when I get to you, knowing how big, how much room I have for the pockets. So. Ta-da. They're all cut out. Line these guys up. Oh, you're still sick. Ooh, yeah, that, that's been going on for a while. A bit less sick. Uh, well, that's good. Did it, it never escalated to the worst of what you had last year, right? I was going to ask that. On Discord, how, how the sickness was going and if it was done being a sickness or if it was still being a sickness. Things we don't like to hear. Stick a couple pins in this. It's still a little, your hearing's still a little off, but nowhere as bad as last year. Good. Well, at least there's that. 
At least it's not as bad as it was last year. I'm glad of that. Okay. Do some pins. Do some pins. Mm. I feel like I had the needle that I wanted somewhere where I could find it easily. This'll do. This'll do. Few more days, yeah, few more days left of the year. Is anyone into uh, New Year's resolution making? I'm not, I've never been good at that. I have never been good at that. Oh, two thread needles easily. Hey, I only had to do one complaints about it. Only one complaints. <laughs> comes from the Norse practice of making oaths over the Yule feast for the upcoming year oh I never knew that adjusting my bodice I didn't tie it appropriately in the front because I woke up late so it wants to be up here because I didn't take time to tie it appropriately. All right, now I'm just gonna stitch these together. Pretty plain and simple. And they were taken very seriously. If you broke your oath, you were labeled an oath breaker. Ooh. Yeah, you you don't want to be an oath breaker. Yes, I yeah, I I I read your blog post. I am bad at making goals. I'm bad at making goals. Mostly because I feel, uh, it's mostly because I have a trouble, I have trouble if I feel pressured into doing something, you know, I have trouble, uh, maintaining it. I was just marking my fingernail, how big I want my stitches because I can't be trusted to make them all similarly sized stitches. can't be trusted. It's not that you're bad at making them, it's that you haven't learned how to be realistic about them. This is true. I don't make promises to even myself because I know I'll be disappointed if I don't meet them. Mm -hmm. 
Although I'm bad at making them too. Short term, smaller goals. Yeah, but me saying out, it out loud then makes me feel like I'm forced to, to do it. I don't know. I'm socially awkward even to myself. Ooh, that's not good. That's not good. Hopefully it's no one too bad. You know that feeling total? Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon's taking a turn. You're not so sure if it's a kid's game anymore. Oh, I feel that one. Only a socio. Well, we don't appreciate those around these parts. Yeah, uh, Pokemon's a little, little dark when you really think about it. It's just a bit dark. It's just a bit dark if you think about it. They make new accounts to contact you. And at least by not blocking them, they keep using the same account, so you know it's them. Yeah, that's tricky though, you know? I'm glad I've never uh, had, had to deal with that. I'm glad I've never had to deal with that. Although, I do have several family members who keep trying to, trying to find me online. <laughs> and that can be just as bad. <laughs> if you know, know some of the stories about some of my family members, there are reasons why I don't want them around me. Okay. So this is going to be a pretty quiet, gentle, gentle stream. Ooh, you got a leaflet from Scientology yesterday about a free personality test. <laughs> it was hand delivered. Oh. Yeah, I uh I totally judge uh some people in my area based on the fact that they have the yard signs for the, the uh local cult. Do you judge people based on that? Is 
The other day, my uh, my aunt was saying that she uh, has an arrangement with some uh, local thrift shop. They're not really a thrift shop, but that's the closest thing to it. And uh, that they'll pick up stuff for her clients for free if she needs them and then in turn uh, their, her clients can pick out things that they need from said store if they need like furniture stuff or what have you and uh, and I mentioned I was just like yeah they're part of the cult and she's just like what it's like yeah they're part of the cult and she's like okay I'm not going there anymore <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not super cool. I was like, it was a nice deal and all, but I don't really want to support that. Like, yeah, I don't really either, that's why I don't go there. And plus it gives me anxiety. The store, uh, they have multiple storefronts in the town. Multiple. And it's just their front for being a hoarder, really, because you walk into one of these stores and there's so much stuff in these stores that you can barely walk. Like it's stuff from ceiling to floor without much rhyme or reason to them. You know, it's just a bunch of stuff, not even really organized, just stuff. It makes me anxious. So I, I've only been in there once and it was a long time ago. Like years and years ago. And I do not want to go back. <laughs> That's too much stuff. I started out a little rough with my stitches, but we're getting there slowly. I had to ease my brain into uh, hand stitching. I don't do a whole lot of it. Oh, I always, it, because my fingers are so small, it doesn't stay on the way I want it to. And it bothers me because it's wiggly. I have one. It's right here. I could wear it. But I have a hard time. I have a hard time with it. I tried to do the thing where you flatten it a little bit in order for it to fit your finger better. But I have, my widest finger is a, a ring size four. Well, I have a vintage one. <laughs> they came in one size. It's an ad for life insurance from like 1906. I have a silicone one somewhere, but I don't like it. I don't like the feeling of it. So yeah, I have very, very tiny fingers. You have adjustable metal ones. Ooh, that's something I could get behind. I don't like the feel of the silicone ones. I was talking about uh, whether or not the other day they make little like just like one or two finger like glove sort of things for knitting. It's like because I have all these tiny little cuts on my index finger. <laughs> I 
But then I would have to actually research something like that. Although this isn't, this one isn't that bad. It's just wiggly. Art gloves, yeah. Something to block me from stabbing myself with my knitting needles on my highly sensitive uh, hand days. This is why I always double thread my needles because I drop them. And if you thread through a loop instead of having a hanging bit, it doesn't fall off. It doesn't fall off. I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to look uh, into some some gloves for some of the days. Some of the days where you know you've stabbed yourself too many times and you need you need something. Do they make cool leather ones? Because I would be really, really down for that. Like, my brother was like, just get like an archery glove, but the opposite. <laughs> like, well, I don't think they make archery gloves, but the opposite. That's not how you market things like that. Archery gloves, but the opposite. Yes, you can just find those in stores under that name. I'm excited. This weekend, I am going to get to play D&D &D again. My uh, group is finally getting back together for a game on uh, New Year's Eve. I'm excited. It's been several months now since we've played. So I'm very excited. We've got to save the city and the world. I wonder what characters we're going to play. Because this campaign that we're playing uh, it has multiple timelines. <laughs> so I have multiple characters. So I, I'm, I'm wondering which ones we're going to play. Got like, uh, some mid-level characters and then we have we broke our timeline so we had to go in we had to go into our current timeline with uh <laughs> with new characters that are level 20 to go defeat a boss because we made uh we made it happen too early in the game on accident so uh so we have level 20 characters, specifically for that reason. I think mine is a half elf. I think a half elf. Is that the arcane trickster? I'm not 100% sure. I can't, I can't uh, remember off the top of my head. But I have a, a, a rogue, a ranger, a... <laughs> Uh, there's two other ones too, but I'm not 100% sure. It's been, like I said, several months now, so it's going to be good to get back into that. And plus, I got new dice for Christmas. Got new dice. They have dragon scales on them. 
Will I probably use them? Probably not. Because I have a lucky set of dice that I always use. That everyone is convinced is probably, uh, like cheating. You know, you, you know you've had one person or another that has dice that you think are, are pretty, you're pretty sure are, uh, broken. I have a set. They're blue and black. And, uh. They have a high tendency to roll a 16 or above. <laughs> Which is nice for me. So these, these dice will either roll 16 or above or a 1. No in between. Rarely an in between. But a majority of the time it is 16 or above. I have been asked on several occasions not to use said dice. Okay. Let me do a couple stitches over top each other. Well, this time the sociopath blocked you. I am glad of this for you. We don't need sociopaths. They're dangerous. Couple stitches over each other to kind of lock in the stitch and re-thread my needle. Re-thread my needle. I don't like to go too long with my threads because it's just asking for trouble. It's asking for trouble. They get tangled up too easily if you uh, make them too long. And then I get frustrated. So I don't like doing that. So this will mean threading my needles a couple times, but that is better than having to deal with your thread tangling. This is a good rule. Never go, never go longer than that. Good rule to live by. I do not like dealing with my stuff being uh, tingly. Makes me crazy. Couple stitches over to lock in your thread. I am getting better. I'm getting better at hand sewing. The more I do it, the better it gets. I'd like to say my stitches are getting more even, but they're... Ooh, yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know a whole lot about cross stitch, but... I can imagine with needles, with uh, embroidery... Bleh. You know what I mean. <laughs> with embroidery floss, you, you have to be careful about the fraying.
because there's so many strands. Nobody wants tangles. Oh, yeah. So it tends to get fluffy fast. I felt that way with the cotton yarn that I used for uh, Nova. It frayed like no other. It looks all right, though. Just you had to be careful uh, when you were, say, threading it. Wait, we're sewing in here? Yes, yes, we're sewing in here. You are so blind. I, I, I am, I am sewing. I am currently sewing by hand. Tiny straps. Tiny straps. How could you be so blind? <laughs> Just all the sewing puns wrapped into one. Doing like a back stitch so that it's nice and nice and solid. Nice and solid. You stitch with dental floss? Yeah, I think you, you told me that before. So what are the downsides and advantages of sewing with dental floss? Is the plus side the fact that you smell minty all the time? I know uh, I've been told people use dental floss for uh, like gathering lines and stuff like that. Doesn't break. Okay. So I can see why uh, people would use it for gathering lines, for sure. Oh. So if someone tries to rip your patches off in a fight, they can't. Oh, this makes sense. This makes sense for that. It's a very common thing with making pressed pants too because it holds together better than thread. Oh, this is interesting. I've only, yeah, I've only ever heard of sewing with it other than uh, sap stuff with, like, gathering lines. Which, when you make gathering lines, you want it to have thread that's not going to break because you're pulling on it pretty hard in order to gather fabric up, sometimes pretty tight, or uh, a lot of layers of fabric all at once. Threads easily. You can easily, you can't easily hide dental floss stitches. It's very bold. Yeah, because they're very thick. <laughs> Dang, Stompy McGee. 
better than what was going on yesterday, though, so I can't complain too hard. I'm kind of excited for the day that I get to go back to streaming in the not front room. Color options. There's exactly one. White. I don't know. They've got to make uh, dental floss for kids as fun colors, right? <laughs> yeah, you can't easily match your thread to your fabric if you're using dental floss. Yeah, I've seen black black floss. Like uh charcoal floss probably. I feel like I've seen green before. Oh, softer and weaker. True. Which you wouldn't want for what you're doing. Because you're in it for the thickness, for the strength. You're in it for the strength. So we've made it like halfway, almost. Not bad. I'm not being too terrible at judging the length of stitches. I'm doing a pretty good job. Although every once in a while there gets to be one that's a little too big or a little too small. Oh. Oh yes, you do need to send me an Instagram of that. I want to see your perfect stitches. I was gonna say I don't really don't really have a lot of uh, perfect stitches. <laughs> I haven't done a lot of a, a whole lot of hand stitching unless it's been ooh thank you unless it's been uh, necessary. But I've been. I've been practicing when I can. Although I'm getting more into doing hand sewing these days. There's something relaxing about it. Okay, I'll I'll look at it. You're gonna give me a minute though. There's something relaxing about it. Plus, if I'm going to make, <clears throat> if I'm going to go through with making a uh, 1890s wardrobe, I'm going to need to practice my hand sewing because not everything in that case can be done on the machine. I also don't have a machine that's period appropriate, technically speaking. <laughs> if I wanted to get real, real into it. I would have to have a machine for it. A, a particular machine. Although I don't think 
sewing technology changed that much from uh, uh, the 1890s to the 19 aughts. Oh yeah, I've been practicing so that I do, in fact, get better at it so that when I get to that point, but I don't know if I've, I don't think I have said that my, like, ultimate goal for this year would be to, by Christmas, have a 1890s wardrobe in order enough to volunteer at the local historical society. But that is kind of my goal. Ooh. Oh. Those are absolutely beautiful. They're so straight. They're like perfect. How does one manage that? What is this wiz wizardry? There's one stitch that's a little too short. But other than that, it's like perfect. Perfect. So I think that would be the goal that I'm setting for myself for 2023 is to be able to create a full 1890s uh, out one outfit at, is what I'm shooting for. Because I know I might be able to handle that. Yeah, we talked about that in... in uh, in our messages, but I don't think I said it on stream. Yes, so my other plan for this year is to make lesson videos based off of a Victorian sewing manual that I've been reading on online. It's on an online archive uh, called Dressmaking Self-Taught. So I want to make videos that go through each step of each of the lessons in that book. Because I think it will help me and also help other people learn how to dress make self-taught. <laughs> so I, I think I want to do that this year, which I should start working on. Because the first lesson is all uh, is all uh, hand stitches and different types of hand stitches. So those are my goals for this year. So I lied when I said I don't make goals for myself. Those are my goals. Is to work through that book and in turn make myself a late 1800s outfit so that I can uh, volunteer with my uh, historical society. They do a big thing at Christmas and I've always wanted to be a part of it but I didn't know what I could do to be a part of it other than just be there I guess. But the last year or so, it's had me thinking about it, and there are not many young people that volunteer with the Historical Society, which is very unfortunate. And I, I want to do something to be a part of it, because it's very special to me. The, the whole village, museum, hold a special part in my heart. 
And I think I could do that by uh, not only dressing up in period appropriate attire, but also teaching people teaching people about how clothes were made and worn at the time that all of this was going on. I think that could be very important. Especially since, you know, a majority of, like, people or kids don't understand how much work went into these things. Or why things were done the way they were. Or why things were worn the way they were. And they have an excellent exhibit on, uh, on dresses. But none of them really know the ins and outs of the fashion of the time, or how things were made. So I think that I could bring something to that community of people. And also educate people on the importance of, you know, knowing these skills. Maybe inspire a new generation of kids that are willing to do more for themselves. Instead of just, you know, everything being done for them. Yes, we got to keep this knowledge alive. So I'm hoping that by uh, early December next year, I will have something together in order to do that. Because, yeah, I could get it together and I could throw it together, but I, I don't really want to throw something together and have it done. I want to do it right. I want to do it right. So that's my goal. It's to do the darn thing right. But yeah, the first whole lesson of that book is, uh, <gasps> two nipples, welcome in, welcome to the crew. I hear you're new. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. We were just talking about Victorian attire. And my goals for next year. As far as sewing goes. And kind of personal things. I don't know. Uh, I want to sew a Victorian wardrobe next year. And also make videos based off of each of the lessons in a book from the period called uh, Dressmaking Self-Taught. That, that is the plan, because I would like to volunteer with my local historical society. Because Victorian things make me happy. Because they were extra and weird and I don't know, man. They send people their hair for funsies. <laughs> they were an interesting crew of people is all I'm saying. I love you, have some of my hair. It makes sense, I guess. They have a beautiful hair wreath in the historical society. 
Beautiful hair wreath. Whomstever it belonged to had a lot of friends, is all I'm saying, in order to be able to create that much. That big of a hair wreath. They had to have lots of friends. They were the cool kid in town. But today I am hand sewing and dealing with the shaky hands a little bit. Always fun, always fun. I was about to say, the harder I focus on something, the more shaky my hands get, it seems. The shakier I get. But I think we've made good progress. We're getting there. I think we have to do this several times over. Several times over. Ooh, was it a busy night? Lots of uh, calls. Lots of problems. Lots of problems. All kinds of stuff. Oh, that sounds fun. Not so much. ourselves some new thread because we're running low can I be a champ I can be a champ I can do it I can thread it in one go look at me go look at me go You know what? <sighs> You're chilly. We don't like you being chilly. Thank you. It's a, it's a bodice. I made it myself. It goes really well with my dress. I know you don't, that's okay. Oh, thank you. It's my favorite, or one of my favorites. The My favorite thing about this bodice is this little lady right here who's looking sassy, working the field. <laughs> but yeah, I hand stitched all the eyelets on this, so that took a long time. I had to uh, plan out uh, I had to plan out where everything uh, hit on this fabric because I only had, I think, like a yard of this fabric. And you can't get it anywhere. It was vintage. So I had to plan everything out just perfectly so all of the adverts hit in the right spot. It's almost frilly enough for a wedding. I, you know, you could wear, wear it to a wedding as long as you're the bride, probably. Because you, you, you can't get away with wearing white if you're not the bride. I'm going to have to go to a wedding pretty soon. I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't wear it to a wedding. 
Cause you, cause you'd wear pants. To be fair, I might too. Ooh, you finished the base game. Ooh, and it had a crazy ending. This is interesting. I haven't played uh, the new Pokemon. My last one was uh, Sun and Moon. Uh, no, I started Sword and Shield. Never mind. I just started it, though. I, I never really, really got too far in that one. So it's been a while. It's been a while. That wasn't that, yeah. It was only like a couple of years ago, right? Time is irrelevant to me, unfortunately. So yeah, those were my, that was my, so really the last one that I really played was was uh, Sun and Moon because I actually played through that one. Not to completion, but pretty much to completion. I think I got to the, the last bit and then I couldn't beat the, the Leap Four or whatever and then I uh, gave up. <laughs> By give up, I mean I meant to go back and make my Pokemon better before I tried again and then promptly forgot to do so. <laughs> and then just never went back and, and, and did it, so. It's my game and I want to win now. So yeah, that's really the last one I played played. Cause I just barely started uh, Sword and Shield. Barely. Final, no, no, it wasn't Sword and Shield. It was uh, Sun and Moon that I Got to the final battle. I barely started uh, Sword and Shield. Barely. I don't even think I really got to the first uh, <laughs> the first city or whatever in uh, Sword and Shield. I just started it and then never went back to it. Whereas with Sun and Moon, I played through all of the gyms and such. I should, I should play that again. Hi, sewing. How are you? Yes, I'm back. I'm back this morning. I was a little late today, but only by a little bit because I forgot to set my alarm. <laughs> I am pretty good. I am working on a needle organizer for my knitting needles, but I am hand sewing it. So it's going nice and slow, but I'm getting a lot of practice in on my hand stitches, which is good to do. It's good to do. And I'm being good and using a thimble because somebody told me I should. <laughs> I don't always need an alarm, but when I do, I do. So I set one just in case because I'm the sort of person who gets anxious about not waking up when they're meant to. And uh, today I slept, I slept until six o'clock. And I've been meaning to be awake at 5.30 so that I can be live at 6 for this week and last week. I'm 
but alas, I forgot. So here I am. <laughs> I also forgot to uh, program my coffee pot to start at five o'clock. So I also have that problem. So I had I had pour over coffee this morning, which is already cold, but I can deal with cold black coffee. I cannot deal with creamed coffee cold. Creamed coffee cold is a travesty. I am a morning person. I am definitely not an evening person. Once I wear down for the day, there is no keeping me awake. I tried to be a night owl back in the day. This would just end up with me being asleep on the couch during every movie that I've ever watched <laughs> past nine. Ooh, donuts. Well, I have a crap ton of cookies, so I have not been craving sugar at all. You're the only morning person in your entire family. Same. Same. That's why I've been streaming from here as opposed to in the, com the room where the computer is. Because I'm the only morning person and nobody else is awake. Two dozen last week. Oh, they hate you. Uh, back when I lived with my parents and siblings, I don't think I was a morning person. I was a night person, but also I was a teenager then. I, I moved out when I was 19, so I have been on my own since then. But back then I was a teenager and had that teenager energy to stay up late all, all the time. We've all been there. Uh, but also that was the only time of day that the house was quiet. So I wanted to be awake for that. Hydrate. I shall. I shall hydrate. Cheers, chat. Take a drink. Take a drink if you have one. Use your bells. I was told I was missing out on the opportunity to name my points bells because Kells Bells. And also bells are the currency in Animal Crossing. <laughs> it is 8.08 a.m. I usually start streaming around 6.30 a.m. Uh, lately it's been closer to 6 though. I am not real thirsty, but I need to take a pause real quick, guys.
Okay. I'm back. I'm here. Let's stretch. If my I'm unmuted. That is. I'm here. Two PM for you. Nice. I'm gonna unplug my arm. Arm. Plug my phone in. Okay. We are going. What is everyone else up to today? You're making a mock-up. Sketch is trying not to freeze. Uh, Cookie is procrastinating the dishes. I was doing that earlier this week. It's not even that cold. It's warmer than it has been lately. But you guess because you're sick, you're feeling nothing but cold. Uh, I can imagine that since you're sick, uh, you're feeling a little bit chillier than usual. Yes, a hot drink. Light your, uh, all, all the, light all of the candles. I was like, light all the candles that you have. And then I was like, wait, that could cause a fire. You, you, you probably shouldn't light all of the candles in your, in your, in your place. Don't light all of your candles. You can set your house on fire. What temperature is it even here? My temperature is broken. Let me see. Negative three. It's negative three. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad here either. It's been worse. Seven outside, 14 inside. But your body thinks that it's in the negative. Oh yeah, that makes sense. You're sick. You're sick. Did you have a long drive to your appointment today, Sketch? Or was it pretty quick nearby? Who cares about fancy pinkies? I've got thimble finger. You walked. Well, I didn't know if you it was far enough away that you had to take an Uber. So yeah, that's a chilly walk. That's a chilly walk. 
my car is currently out of commission because I didn't drive it for a week. A 10 minute walk, okay. So somewhat nearby. I didn't drive my car for a week and its battery died. So I have to figure out how I am going to get to my grandmother's today. I cannot just walk to my grandmother's. Unfortunately, she lives far enough away that walking, <laughs> walking to her place is, is not an option. It, it depends. Uh, the city I live in is walkable, but if you want to go outside of your city, which I don't really live in a city city, I live in a town, so. Uh, but things are so spread out in the US that you can't exactly go from area to area with public transport or walking. Because the next closest city to me would be a, a two to three hour walk away. But there's also not really a lot of public transport available. So going between cities is problematic. US cities are partly funded by the motor industry, especially where I am. They're partly funded by the motor because I'm in Michigan, which is the primary place where automobiles were made. Everything is distanced. It's intentionally designed to, yeah. A town. So technically speaking, the, the town that I live in is a, is classified as a city. But it's not a city as in you'd think of a city, like, you know. A big city. It's very small. But since it has what, say, above a certain amount of population, it's considered a city. I grew up in a township which is a smaller, there's, it's hard to define <laughs> what these things are. Yeah. So I grew up in a township. I, well, not fully. The first place I lived uh, was between a city and a village. So it wasn't really classified as anything. It's just an area that was between the two. I'm sure it used to be something back in the day, but was not by the time I lived there, but I went to school in the village. So the village is an air is a, is a town that is small enough not to be a town because it has a population of under say 5,000. I don't know the exact delineation in population. used to be a village for miners. It grew and it's now a town, but we call it a village still. And everyone called the major city in the region a town. That makes sense. Yeah, the, the city I live in used to be a village, you know, used to be a town and is now a city because its population is high enough to classify it as that. 
but a lot of the surrounding areas are still villages and townships. So. I lived between two villages when I was a young child. So I wasn't in any uh, like city limit or vi village limit or town limit. I was just between between two. Move in a town where you can get to the other side on foot by 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I live on the outskirts of the city that I live in and I could, I could walk to the other side in 15 minutes. <laughs> yes, your entire country is the size of, of a state, but uh, probably not the size of the state that I live in. The state that I live in is quite, quite large. It's one of the, the biggest. Yeah, that's a pretty big city. 22,000 people. I live in a small city right now. I barely consider it a city. But the next closest city is uh, like a half hour driveway. So it's a good probably four hour walk. If you wanted to venture that. I used to bike ride from uh, my childhood home to the next biggest city. And it was a good uh, 10 hour, not 10 hour, a good uh, two hour endeavor. And bike ride is a strong, strong word because I typically was not the one riding the bike. I was the kid that would uh, ride in the carriage behind my dad's bike because I couldn't bike ride well. <laughs> Oh, with everyone from the neighboring towns counted. Yeah, I'm not sure about the population of where I currently live. It's got to be in the mid to high thousands. Probably not much over 10, 10, I would imagine. But my uh, childhood, the village that I lived near in my childhood had less than 5,000. I know that for a fact because uh, the graduating class I would have graduated in from that uh, village had uh, 24 kids in it. And there were less than, uh, there were less than 2,000 kids in all of the schools. Less than 1,000 kids in all of the schools <laughs> in that village. So underfunded. Yeah, you, you, you live in a bigger, bigger city. Sketch. Uh... My city, I believe, became a city in the 1890s, or a town or whatever. So it's not very old in the scheme of things. There are six towns, three elementary schools, and one high school. Um, the, the current one that I live in has two elementary schools, a middle, and a high school. But this is one of the larger uh, cities in the area. And it 
uh, the schools cover uh, multiple multiple cities or villages, towns, what have you. So kids from uh, at least three other towns come to this city for schooling. So. Whereas uh, where I grew up and where I graduated from only had the one, one town really that it had going to its schools. Although when I was in middle school, a semi-local elementary school closed down and a lot of its kids started going to our middle school. So I had one of the larger graduating class, I had like the largest graduating class that my small tiny school had had up to that point because of that elementary school closing down the year I was going into middle school because uh, the elementary school pretty much catered to one subdivision <laughs> and the people who lived there did not want to send their kids to the intercity school Because, to be fair, it was a little sketchy. So I don't blame them. So they uh, all ended up sending their kids to the school I went to. The sound tenor ha center has a church from the 1300s. <laughs> Your town originated in the year 50. Yeah, things are a little different in the U.S. <laughs> I was about to say, all of the buildings in my, in the historic society were, most of them were made in the 1800s. Because I'm living in the middle of, closer to the center of the country, things are not quite as old as, say, the East Coast, where things were settled fairly early in the history. Where did my needle go? There it is. In the history of the United States. So. I, I don't want to say, uh, because my, one of my, uh, my hometown is fairly easy to look up. But I don't know how much detail I want to go in, because again, it's a small town. And from that, it would be easily findable to find, you know, my actual location. <laughs> but my uh, original city is kind of has some historic uh, stuff to it. Not like historic historic. It's kind of relatively recent as of like a 60, yeah, like a 60... Uh, Oh, it's not 60 now. It's probably closer to 80. 80 years ago, there was a big event that happened in the small town that I grew up in. So I don't want to go into too much depth about that. But my my hometown has a lot of uh, uh, tragic history to it. But it's fairly searchable. And since it's so small, it would be only like it would be pretty easy to find me from there, so. I don't know, I don't wanna go into depth and then in the future have a problem with someone finding me or whatever. You know how it is. Discord. You bringing out the Discord, Discord link? Also, I have a handy, I listed all of my commands on, on my uh, page now, which has got to be handy. 
right handy. I finally remembered to do that so that you guys know what you can type in. Oldest traces of your town were found. Nice. So nice and close to a river. Very important. I haven't made one yet, but I plan on it. I do plan on it. I started one and then I got distracted as I do and then it never saved and then I have the base the bare bones of commands I see other people's commands and I'm like oh you have so many good commands I need to put more in story of your life <laughs> no it was, it's a plan to have it there it just I forget half the stuff I'm doing in the middle of doing it. This is so typical of me. Oh, you're going to try warm up. Bye. Get warm. But don't end up setting anything on fire. Because I've done that on accident before. I'm sure I will talk to you later. But you get warm. Ooh, when the water is low, you can see the stones, which is a discovery of old artifacts from the Roman. That is cool. Who are the boss in your country? Still being researched. Yeah, that is cool. We don't really get stuff like that too much where I am, except for with an exception of like the really old parts of of stuff because you know the sit the area of the state that I'm in wasn't really settled until this 1800s <laughs> you know it's it was settled so recently in history that there's nothing really that you can find There's not really historical digs around here. Oh no, I, I enjoy this. I enjoy history. Like I said, our historical uh, society is full of buildings from at best the early 1800s, but majority of them are uh, late 1800s. the the church in the historical society is from 1888 and that's that's historic here <laughs> because you know that's when the towns around here were established not that people weren't living here before but that's when they were established But there were definitely parts of the state that were around a lot earlier than here. But I live in a... I don't live like super... I live in the middle of the state. So I'm not near any uh, great bodies of water or anything like that so it wasn't settled as early as say uh, like the Detroit area or up near the water in the Upper Peninsula just because uh, we weren't close to the water and therefore it wasn't a trade route but a lot of the Upper Peninsula was established a lot earlier than the middle of the state just because travel up 
to this area just wasn't as easy to handle before automobiles or anything like that. You gotta be close to the water. And I'm not, I'm not close to, to like any water. You're gonna focus on something because you're not making any progress. Yeah, that do be that way sometimes. I'm, I'm making pretty decent progress, at least. I finished one line of stitches. I did one line. One whole line, that counts for something. Hand stitching takes a while though, so. You know how it is. I've got the thimble sweats. <laughs> the thimble sweats. I can dry off my finger. I'm thinking perhaps tomorrow we will uh, get a poll together of hair colors. Hair color poll for when we reach the, the 100 follower goal. Because we have a few suggestions. A few. So far, our options are blue, red, and teal. <laughs> That's what we have going on. I'm not sure which one I would want to win. I'm open to any hair color. You can help choose. Do you have any suggestions? Cause we're gonna have a poll probably tomorrow at some point.
Light purple or light blue? Hmm. It's not like extremely in your face, purple or blue, just a light version. Kind of like pastels, and pastels are easy, are kind of easy for me to find. I will have to bleach my hair though. So that would be the one thing. I, I think I would have to bleach my hair regardless though. So. That's the, uh, the main thing I would have to think about. But yeah, that, that's what, I will put that in the uh, list, in the poll. A light blue or purple. I haven't had light purple since like high school. <laughs> it could look good. It could look good. But I'm hoping sometime in the next few days we cross over that threshold and everyone can pick. And the plan would be to go out later that day and get get the supplies needed and get it done for the next stream. That would be the idea. That would be the idea. But that definitely could look nice, like a light color. But I will add those to my list of colors for our poll, which hopefully we'll be able to, I will be able to do tomorrow so that we can get it done. Cause I'm hoping in the next couple days we get to the goal. That's the hope anyways, it's only three away. So got to start thinking about these things. Preparing. Oh, I'm dreading the fact that I need to figure out the battery situation with my car today. I didn't drive my car for over a week and it's very cold so my battery died and I meant to go visit my grandmother this afternoon. So I'm kind of nervous about whether or not it's going to work or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty off about it. I should have, uh, probably about five, six hours <laughs> and it's negative three out today. So, not super viable of a walking distance. Not super viable.
Negative three Celsius. I, I, I've converted to Celsius. Congratulations, guys. I figured since a majority of people that I talk to are from places that use Celsius, I should just use Celsius because it's easier. So, y'all have converted me. I have everything set to Celsius now. I've been converted to a Celsius user over the course of the past uh, two months. Yeah, you see, it's nice and easy. Nice and easy. Fahrenheit is complex. Maybe eventually enough people in the US will use Celsius that we'll just switch. Yeah, it's just easier to use. Easier to use it. Plus everyone on here typically uses Celsius, so. It's useful to me to use it because then you guys don't have to try to convert what I'm saying. We just, we just all understand each other. everybody understands each other. This is what we want. I realized that I did not have my thimble on and I was currently poking myself every single stitch I made. Every stitch. Oh. I could take a nap today. I feel like I could. I'm a little sleepy. But I think that also has to play in with me being a little anxious about whether or not I will be able to get out to my grandmother. Uh, fluently, just English. Although I do know a little bit of German and I did take two years of Spanish, so. I do know some Spanish, but I am very bad at pronunciation of Spanish for some reason, despite taking two years of it. Two full years of it in school, but that's because ours are hard. Ours are hard. And I've been uh, attempting to learn German for the past couple of years, but it's been a while. How about yourself? I can read a decent, uh, a decent amount in Spanish and a decent amount in German, but, uh, Dutch and of course French. If French is the only only language you don't like. Uh, I would like to learn French. Uh, to be able to read some documents like family history documents. But that's part of the reason why I'm also learning German.
family history things and stuff. But uh, languages were a requirement uh, for graduating high school where I am from. So uh, you had to take a certain amount of years of a language and the only language that my school offered was Spanish. <laughs> so that is why the Spanish. Hi! Hi Hut, how are you? Welcome in. How are you doing on this fine day? It's fine Wednesday. If it's Wednesday for you, some people it's Thursday, some people it's probably still Tuesday. I think it's early enough in the day that it's still possible to be both. It's too frau. So yeah, I don't fully know any other languages other than English. They just weren't really taught. Browsing and building. What are you building? I'm doing pretty well. What are you building? We like to know what people craft around here. I am thoroughly impressed with pretty much everybody's crafting ability. I am currently sewing a organizer for my a set of armor. I like this. I like this. What kind of armor? Uh, metal, leather. I'm a gal who likes some armor. You're speaking French to me? You speak in French to me? I only really know the tiniest little tiny bit of French. So. Metal. Later some leather. Ooh, what kind of metal do you use? Are you a, a steel? Steel, nice. I've never made armor, but it's so cool. It's a stupid language. Warum du sie het willen wetten? Why would you want to know it? Uh, reading family documents. Uh, my family, parts of my family were uh, French Canadian. You've made the stupid decision to change which armor set you're making halfway through preparing for a competition. So stress. Oh yeah. Oh no. That is stressful. I haven't done metal work in a long time, but that's stressful. The amount of time and effort that goes into working with metal. I do not envy you. I do not envy you. And I only ever really made small things with metal. Do you uh, sporge? But the new set will be very pretty. <laughs> you see, this does have draws to it. This does have draws. You, yep. Uh, do you use a uh, gas forge or uh, coal? I, I've only ever used gas in the past. And I only really made small trinkets. You cold forge. 
Gas to anneal. Okay. Ah, I'm so interested in what you do. I've never made anything bigger than, like, yay big. So. It's... Armoring is so interesting. Because I've only ever made something that was so small. It's just crazy to me, you know, how long it would take to make something so large. <laughs> you can show me the breastplate that you made and are now abandoning. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's such, it's such an amazing craft. I never was able to get super great at, at uh, blacksmithing. But again, I haven't done a whole lot of practice on it. That is spectacular. That is truly spectacular. Yeah, I am extremely impressed by Metalcraft. It's like I can understand the bare bones of it, but not to that extent. You hit it with a hammer until it looks pretty. That That is about the gist of it. Oh, I'll talk to you later. You have a great rest of your day sewing. Enjoy your work. I'm not long for getting off myself. Because it's getting to be about 9 o'clock right now. And that's about about time that I have to head off for the day. And plus I have to worry about my car. Which is not starting. So I have that fun, fun stuff to deal with today. Such fun, much fun to be had. But you enjoy, uh, you enjoy your sewing project. I hope it turns out spectacularly. So we've made it through probably, I would say, a third of the second line of stitches here. Hand sewing just goes nice and slow. It, there's kind of something relaxing about it that you don't get with machine sewing. The set was going pretty okay, but then you made the mistake of watching the trailer for Hades 2. Oh. And some decisions were made.
<laughs> Let's see this. Oh, yeah. That looks... The, this decision. <laughs> that was the decision that was made. I could see, I could see how that decision was made. I, I could see how you came to that decision. When is the competition? Yeah. How long do you have? July, okay. Still, you know, with the amount of time it takes. Probably. Whenever the next European TwitchCon is. Oh, okay. So you, they haven't announced it yet. Um, isn't, where is it this time? I remember it's somewhere a lot of people were kind of, uh, like really again about Paris. Yeah. I just remember a lot of people complaining about it. No, not again as in like in Paris again, but I don't know. I think a lot of people have uh, their qualms about Paris, I guess, was what they were going on about. I'm not 100% sure. I was like, I'm never going to go. I'm not, I'm never going to be able to go there. So, meh. <laughs> But yeah, I think a lot of people just, you know, they've been to Paris themselves, so maybe that was what I was thinking. But I've been to Paris, I don't want to go back. I have never been to Europe. Although, I would like to someday. I think it would be interesting, fun. I have only uh, been out of the country a couple of times, which is a little embarrassing to say. But I've only been out of the country a couple of times. And it was to Canada, which is not that far in the scheme of things. Just across the bridge. Yeah. Uh, Things in Europe are much closer than things in the U.S. So it's a lot, uh, it's a little, a little simpler to travel from country to country without, uh, say, airfare in Europe. Nepal and Mexico. Nice. Yeah, I've only been to Canada, which is a drive away, you know. It's a drive away. A good, decent drive, but still, not, not that far in the scheme of things. And 
And there's so far you can drive in the U.S. that, you know, there are many places to go. It's like traveling to different countries sometimes. The distance, the fact that people from one state to another are so completely different. You nearly have to learn a new language to figure out what some people are saying in certain parts of the country. The same landmass as California? Mm. I didn't know it was as big as California. California is a fairly large state. Fairly large. It's like a good uh, 10 hour drive from probably one end of my state to the other. So it's a, it's a decent drive. And maybe 11 if you really weren't rushed, which everyone in the state seems to be rushed to where they're going. <laughs> we have a real speeding problem in these parts. Which is typically a... Okay, so it's a little bit bigger. I was like, man, I didn't know the UK was that big. California is pretty large. It's slim-ish, but it is pretty large. You can drive the length of the UK in like 14 hours. Yeah, that's a long drive. That's pretty close to the longest drive I've made. I drove uh, the scenic route from here to North Carol South Carolina, and it was uh, 16 hours. Scenic route. We took the long way. Uh, it wasn't as long on the way back. It was only 13, 13 hours. <laughs> On the way back. And I do not wish to drive that far again. That was too much driving in one day. Way too much driving in one day. Way too much. I think I would frankly go a little bit mad if I tried to do that again. I'm not used to being cooped into one spot that long anymore. Getting close to halfway done with this line of stitches. I'm getting tired of uh, wearing this thimble, but it definitely protects my fingers from being jabbed. At least some of them. <gasps> Hello, craftsman. How are you doing this morning? Is 
What are you up to? I am uh, doing okay. I'm a little bit tired. I'm a little bit hungry. Fairly, fairly normal. Just waking up. Nice. I feel like I just woke up, but I've been awake for three hours. You've probably been there before. Or you've been awake for quite some time, but you also feel like you just got up. I, uh, it is 9.13 a.m. I woke up at 6. Same here. We're in the same time zone. Nice. I'm just an early riser. I I usually go live between six and six and six thirty. The cookies yonder on this table are beckoning to me. They're beckoning. <laughs> You need to start waking up at five again. I enjoy waking up early to have a little time to myself before everything starts getting chaotic. I'm definitely more of an early riser than a night owl. I cannot do anything once I start to get tired. Once I start to get tired, it's a no-go. I will fall asleep doing whatever I'm doing. So, uh, do, are you a cosplayer, I take it, from uh, making video game armor? Another thing that I would love to get into, cosplay. You're more of a night owl, especially when you start to stream at midnight for no reason. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. We have all been there. I typically stream really early in the morning for no reason. No, that's just my scheduled time now. That's how I came upon my scheduled time was because I started streaming early in the morning for no reason and it worked out in my favor. I had a good time once when I streamed at 6.30 and then I just never stopped. Oh no, Hut uh, was uh, in chat a little bit ago. They, they make armor. They make armor. And I was wondering if they did it for, and they were talking about a competition at TwitchCon, so I was wondering if they are a cosplayer. It sounds as if perhaps You just build houses, but they're cool houses, so. We appreciate crafters no matter the craft. We stand the creativity here. Oh, no, yeah. I was wondering if they, they cosplayed 
if they made their armor for cosplay purposes. It seems so, but I someday would enjoy making a small house. Small house for small things. I love looking at miniatures, especially like regular old house miniatures. I'm into it. It's just my eyesight is not super spectacular. So doing finely detailed things is problematic for me. Although I would love, I would love to be able to do it. My eyesight is terrible though. Even corrected, my eyesight is not great. Which probably should mean that I should go see the optometrist soon. <laughs> okay, I've got to tie off this, this piece of thread. Tie off. I've just got to stitch over it a couple times. It's getting too short. Are we more than halfway? We are more than halfway. We're about two quarters done with this line. Oh Lord. Oh. <sighs> Stretch break. Hand sewing, for some reason, for some reason, I say, for some reason, hand sewing <laughs> makes my wrists and elbows hurt. I wonder why. I get more movement when I knit. So uh, the needle stitching where my arms pretty much are stationary Oh, it really gets my arms. Also, if there's anybody who also has any uh, hair color suggestions, I am dyeing my hair whatever color chat chooses at 100 followers. So if you have any suggestions for hair color, you let me know. So far, our suggestions are bright red, blue, teal, light purple, or was that it? Or am I missing one now? Light blue? Yeah, I think that's it. So blue, teal, bright red, purple, or light blue. Those are our current contesters for hair color. This one does not want to go. This one does not want to thread. I've managed. Oh no. And then I almost dipped it in my coffee. The 
That's not a good look. <laughs> not a good look. Got to put in a new piece of thread. Are you currently crafting, Craftsman? Or are you, are you uh, still getting, getting up and going today? Geez, they really got you on that one. Whether to stream or just do off cam work. Oh yeah, the choices, the choices. Okay, I am going to have to get off stream now. But it was nice having you all today. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning. But until then, you have you have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night. <laughs> Whatever time it is for you where you are. And I will see you tomorrow morning. Uh, only a couple streams left until I'm back in my usual room, so I am pretty excited about that. But I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.